Good morning, you fans, and welcome on in. This is the 2008 Sugar Bowl reunion, and it's powered by KSLSports.com. I'm your host and Utes insider, Trevor Allen, and I am so excited to bring you guys this stream. We're going to do things a little bit differently. Normally, we just have a whole group in, but uh, with how many guys we want uh, in this in this stream and to get everybody involved, we can't have 10 guys at one time talking because then audio is just going to be drowned out and everything. So we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to have two groups. And, and so we'll, we'll probably swap out in about 20, 25 minutes or so. And we're going to, we're going to start things off, but throughout the whole broadcast, I'm going to have former Utah linebacker Stevenson Sylvester joining me the entire time to kind of keep things flowing and to get those, those great stories from his teammate Sly. How are you this morning? Good, Trev. What's going on, man? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm ready to talk to uh, some of your teammates. Are you? Oh man, I, just thinking about it, this opportunity. It's been what 13 years, 12 years, um, and I haven't seen these guys in forever. So it's going to be exciting for sure. All right, so we we have we have two guys from our our, our first group in right now. Uh, we're going to bring them in. Hopefully, the other two will join. Um, we're we've we've already got texts out and all that. But uh, for, uh, first up, we're going to talk to. Former Utah defensive end Derek Shelby and former Utah linebacker Mike Wright. Guys, how are you? How you doing? What up? So, first thing, you know, talking about the 08 season, a lot of the a lot of the you know hype. You guys, you guys had a whole camera crew following you guys around. But for for you, Mike Wright, all of that hype coming into the season. Did, did you honestly feel that you guys were going to be able to bust the BCS, have, you know, a season of what you guys really ended up having? Um, that, yeah, I mean, I think we had a lot of confidence going into camp. Like we, I remember uh, when we were just looking at our, our schedule, um, I mean, we knew that TCU was going to be tough. We had an idea that Oregon State was going to be tough. Um and we you know, obviously knew about the team down south, and we 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 felt like we should have beat them the year before. Uh, and we just we, we had we had a lot of guys coming back. We didn't really lose anybody from the year before, and we finished the year before off like eight of we won eight of the last nine games. So we had a we we were coming off super confident, um, and uh, we were ready to go. So I, I remember going going into that season. Um, I mean, we were, and then uh, the opportunity to play at Michigan for the first game of the year. Uh, was that, was, awesome. that was a big hype. That, that was, was a big, big hype. hype. Like, that was the one thing that we were all looking forward to. Like that was just like, you know, growing up, you turn on college football, you were watching Michigan play whoever. Uh, yeah. So to go play it, to go play at the big house was like, like, uh, you know, just a dream come true playing college football. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we were, we were super confident going into that season. Uh, and yeah, we, I mean, I don't know if we like BCS, you know, playing beating Alabama and the sugar bowl was like, we know that we know that's going to happen, but we we definitely were confident going into that year. Yeah, Derek, for me, was that year was crazy. It was like, I mean, you just we started the year. The thing is, like, I just remember ending the year we played Navy, right? And then looking at like, dang, we really got everybody coming back. We'll have BJ coming back at quarterback, and then like it was like January we were doing winter training, and I'm just like, we got a team. And then you know started talking about Michigan and playing the uh, big house. That was just everything coming in. And the next, you know, media was talking about everybody coming in. I'm like, we got potential here. It's going to be awesome for sure. Derek, you you guys had, you know, all, obviously all that hype. And, you know, it, it was actually kind of, a, you know, a media circus from what Sly has told me. Um, but training camp, what was that like when you guys finally hit the, hit the field, knowing you guys had a lot of guys back and that you guys could have a really special season? Well, uh, all that talk was mostly from the older guys. I was a young pup then. You know, I was <laughs> fresh off the red shirt. And uh, I do believe, I do uh, remember just a lot of focus uh, just going on, like we could kind of run the table. So uh, for me, uh, a lot of my thing was just trying to get on the field. So, uh, yeah, camp was uh, very crazy out there. I want to talk about that, Shelf. You Like, <laughs> did you ever think in your mind that you'd play three technique? <laughs> No, I think no, when no. you first got in there, I was just like, "We go, why, what?" <laughs> oh, I, I definitely remember that because uh, when they told me that, I was kind of shocked. And uh, I remember at practice that whole week, I was just, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't doing very good at it. So, uh, never thought I'd play inside, but uh, I just remember that whole year. A lot of my just thought process was just stay in your gap and don't get blown off the ball. So, <laughs> that was literally the mindset there. 
Mikey, what did you think when we had like four DNs in front of us? Like I was, I was blown away, but what did you think when we had like four DNs in front of us? Like how the hell is this going to work? Man, I remember, like, I talked to these guys playing linebacker now that play behind, like, Star and, like, all these other big <laughs> tackles that Utah's had come through. And I was like, man, for me, it was it was a race to go see if I could make a play. Like, I, you know, like, I loved having Shelby and Newman in there. But I'm like, these guys, I'm just as big. Like, I think, Shelby, I think I was bigger than you back then. Like, oh, they had me by a couple of pounds. I was like, but, two, <laughs> but like, uh, I was just, uh, it was, it was, it was fun. I mean, it, like, it changed. The dynamic of our defense and i think that gave us like an edge uh you know having that having that much speed out there so it, it gave us a look um defensively that uh teams weren't used to and i think that helped that i mean that definitely helped us a lot uh but yeah no it was uh <laughs> it, you know looking back at that now i just like dude that's awesome the show we got, got in and got some playing time and did some did some work for us but I, you know, I, I'm jealous of the guys that got to play behind those big, those big, those big horses in the middle, man. It was, it's, uh, it's, it's all good though. Yeah. All right, guys. I've actually got one more guy who who just showed up. We're gonna bring in former Utah safety Rojo Robert Johnson joining us here. You're you're on mute right now, Rojo. Just so you know, Rojo's coming in mid workout. <laughs> yeah, what's up, y'all? I, I am. I'm, I'm training kids right now because Matt Asiata been messed up and we matt yo matt was supposed to be on with us yeah <laughs> business side this is crazy but go ahead i'm, I'm here though i'm here yeah so yeah we, we were just talking about you know he heading into the season but you know something i want to bring up and this is probably going to be a little bit of a sore sore spot for you guys when when i talk about playing the lobos what uh what uh, comes to mind that was uh probably a game that was a little bit too close for comfort right derek Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I remember uh, that game. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, something about New Mexico, man. They they just always gave us a tough game. And those guys, they literally would go three yards, four yards, three yards, first down. Two yards, four yards. Like, it was a whole game like that. And their defense was just crazy. Like, uh, I always remember, uh, I believe it was Rocky Long, but he was just a blitz and maniac out there just throwing all types of looks. New Mexico, man, it's always a tough game. Yeah, we didn't get no offense. And that was crazy because it's like we had this high-powered offense with everybody. We go against Wyoming. We go against Colorado. We're putting up all these numbers. And we literally, in the last three years, can't score anything. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it was just crazy. And so, like, for I, what we remember was two years ago, uh, my freshman year, we played at New Mexico, which we played at New Mexico that year. And, like, we were – I think we were winning. Mike, you might have been there. We were, we were winning. Three, we were up by 21. We were up by three touchdowns. Yeah. And, like, we were just, like, so defeated at halftime. We were winning, and we were so defeated at halftime. It was like nobody said anything. It was just weird. And then New Mexico came back and beat us up. And so, like, Coach Witt was, like, he was pissed when we went into the uh, locker room at halftime our junior year. And, and it was just like, this ain't happening again. Y'all need to pick it up. And so whatever happened in the second half, I'm I'm glad we we – we skated out of there. It was, it was, that was we definitely scratched and clawed to get out of that win. I'm going to refer all my questions about the New Mexico came to Rojo because that game, Rojo just closed his eyes, came up and hit the hit. He was trying to come hit a hit stick on uh, some running back coming out. And I was right behind him and he just hit me right in the temple, blacked, <laughs> blacked out, spun around. I laid down flat on my face for like five seconds and then just popped up. And I don't remember much of that game. And that's, that's that, sounds, that sounds about right. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to ask Mike if, if it actually felt fire. like a loss. It's a lot of friendly fire when it comes to things. So I'm sorry about that, Mike. I hit, I hit <laughs> <in a bowl laughs> game. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep guys off of him. He comes up and just drills me. Uh, <laughs> but, but Mike, did that, did that game feel more like a loss? Um, even though you guys, even though you guys still won the game. I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely afterwards. I mean, you, it's funny because I've watched I've watched the the video that they made the, with the camera crews that were following us and like Coach Witt after that game like was just beside himself <laughs> even though we got a even though we got a W uh, so yeah definitely it, you know back then it definitely felt that way but um, the New Mexico is a tough team when we, in the Mountain West Conference we just I mean Air Force uh, like the, there was just teams that. We're tough to beat, and like it, you just knew it was going to be a street fight from start to finish. And New, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Air Force were like those three teams 
regardless of what their record was. Like you just knew that it was going to be a gritty game. They're just coming at least for a little bit. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people miss that is, is that, you know, you still got to play the game, you know, no matter what pregame hype, you know, whatever Vegas has on the odds of the game, you still got to play the game. And uh, honestly, games, no matter what level, what sport, it's all about matchups. And New Mexico just matched up really well against us. And it was always tough. That's why Oregon State has, you know, really good record against USC. You know, it's yeah. just it's just like, yeah, we're supposed to beat them. But like, we just match up personnel-wise really well. And so that's why Air Force, Oregon State, those were always tough matchups for us. Seriously. So then so then you guys go from that game, which, you know, could, could probably consider thinking of it as a loss. But the game that I think goes down – as one of, if not the best game inside Rice Eccles Stadium in Utah football history, TCU blackout game. You could, I mean, top two, you know, two top eleven teams in the entire country. You guys, you guys, I know you guys had that game circled on your calendar uh, as soon as the schedule came out. But with everything lining up the way that it was, I mean, it it was a really tough game where it it was a lot of defense. But I mean, just. First of all, how loud? Because fan, fans can talk about how loud it was from being up in the stands. Media could talk about it from being up up in the box where you know it's all it's all you know we're all glassed in. Yeah. But you guys were down on the field. All of the noise is coming down to you guys. How loud was Rice Eccles Stadium? Uh, the best. It was deafening. I mean, honestly, earlier that year we had played in the uh, the big house, and that's supposed to have a uh, hundred thousand people, but that place wasn't loud. Rice Eccles was like deafening. You're like yelling to the guy next to you. They can't hear anything. Sign language. Got to come down to the line to touch you to get like a like line movement calls. Like it's insane. I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> no question. Like and Shelby's right. Like in order for me to tell Shelby to move or whatever, I literally had to bend down next to him, tap him on, hit him on the sh- on the side, and then li- yell, move. <laughs> and it was so loud. My biggest memory from that TCU game is the first game we were wearing all black that stadium was lit and then watching on film literally the entire game the camera is shaking that's how you know how loud it is every play (laughs) now now mike how 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 cool was it to for you guys i mean obviously brian goes down you know the offense ends up scoring a touchdown to go ahead but you guys end up getting a stop and we'll we'll talk about that that a pick at the end with rojo here in just a minute but for you guys to be able to seal that win by by getting a stop, just you know, obviously it was really really loud. You guys knew you guys were going to beat them, and you know, keep your guys' streak alive. But just how 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 awesome was that for you guys to be able to get a stop at the end? Um, I mean, we can talk about the play before Rojo got his pick. Uh, I don't know if Sly wants to talk about it. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Sly had Sly had a gift of an interception that like it. I someone I Man. can't remember it but like it was just like all Sly had to do like it was just kind of like drop down in front of him and, it's not uh, that easy Mike it's not that easy the trajectory of the ball going in some crazy well, <laughs> no listen Ro- Rojo Rojo thanks you bro because you helped pad him stats and then he's got his Titan shirts on because of probably that you know just got a little extra uh, extra stats on that but Ro- Rojo got I, help because I, I made both of the receivers go in the same area and then literally backyard pass from Andy Dalton so you know it was very it's a lot easier for him. Hey, hey, it was it, it, I, I helped out the team. I made sure to do what I need to do. Sly just made it better for me by dropping it with the brick hand. But, you know, it, it's okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. Might have worked me playing this. Happens like that. You know, sometimes, sometimes you, know, you gotta sports. save the life. You know. <laughs> I didn't want to be great a couple of times too. I mean, that wasn't like the only time that Sly did that. Like he had, like, I just prayed for gifts like that and never got them. Sly got them all the time. And I don't think he ever converted on one. I don't, I mean, you got some picks, Sly, but like you never got like the easy ones. You always had to make the hard Mike was never around the ball, Trevor. He was never around the ball. <laughs> to be able to get oh, oh, oh. You know, he was always last to the piles. Oh, that's not even true, bro. Michael's uh, Mike like lead, led the team in tackles, but they were all like assisted tackles. Like he'd come by and like mm-hmm. touch mm-hmm. at the end just so he could pat his stat. Mike wasn't that. around the ball to get the balls like that. One J jump on pile. That's how I got a lot of stats. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the technique in the league, Trev. <laughs> Everybody does that. So oh, what need- was <laughs> what so what was the what was the feeling like after you guys beat the Horn Frogs? I mean. 
I mean, obviously it's probably one of the, still probably one of the biggest wins in Utah football history. And I mean, was that kind of the, you know, staple? All right. We can beat anybody in this country. Yeah, I think uh, so. I mean, I think we, like we had three games that year that the, all the fans rushed, rushed on the field and just like to share that moment, that victory with all, all the fans, like, I mean, that's awesome. Like that doesn't happen. Multiple it doesn't times. happen anymore. Like I think there's rules against it, right? From like fans. <laughs> Gotta be. Like 2012, 2013, when that Utah BYU game, when it took three times to beat the Cougars. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just like to have that moment, like, and you know, like but now with rules against that from stuff happening to share that with the fans, it was awesome. Like it's uh, like we, we, I think we really, I mean, I don't know about these guys, but like, I really feel like we took it week by week. So like, it wasn't like, Hey, like we've done it. Like we, like we knew that we had San Diego state that next week. Uh, but just like in the moment, it was, it was just awesome to get that, that victory. And TCU was such a good team. Like I remember that first quarter, like we like defensively just had not seen a team with that much speed. And so just like, it took us, it took us a little bit to like get the speed of the game up. Like the right. like we they, like they were moving the ball on us a lot, bro. And just because that first quarter, because like we we just really weren't ready for the speed that we were seeing. And then we eventually we got up, we got up, and could uh, we made those adjustments. And then you know we were you know the rest is history with that. But like it was just uh, to have those tough games and to come out with the W in, in those moments is is just awesome. No question. Yeah, talking about that game, I know I'm jumping in late on it, but no, that TCU game, yeah, Mikey is 100% correct. Like the speed that we saw was on another level, but we knew that we we knew we had an advantage over them. We knew on defense wise, we'll play bend, don't break defense. Like it started with practice, like with Coach Anderson always letting us know red line effort no matter what. And it was, and when that game came around, we knew that we was going to give up a couple of yards, but we was like, as long as we don't give up any touchdowns, we should be good. And then all of a sudden, the kicker missed – he missed a couple field goals. And I just remember – I remember, like, vividly the Sean Smith. Sean went over and tapped him on, on the back said, man, it's okay. Like, after he missed the second one. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, man. Oh, man, yeah. Sean treated him like a jacked little bit. Like, man, it's okay. You're going you to make it out of this. In front of the whole crowd. So, the whole Utah crowd's going nuts. You know, he just hit the thing that – Kicker's head is down, and Sean's just, hey, I'm just like, okay. It was a good picture that showed that. I was like, Sean is crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, to now, you know, obviously, moving on from that, you guys went on to beat BYU. But of what I want to go into now is is of what this whole reunion is about is is that that a Sugar Bowl win. Um, I know that a lot was said about Saban and Bama really overlooking you guys um, and not really – you know, it, it's okay. Utah, Mountain West, and I know, I I know the media probably played you know a part of it, but again, it's off of comments from coaches and and players and stuff. But they had some NFL guys on there, like 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 Julio Jones and things like that. And yeah. you, you just going into that game, you guys obviously Bama was the favorite, but did you guys feel any different with Bama overlooking you guys? Did you guys feel more motivated, more fired up, or? Or just what, what was your guys' feelings going into that game? Uh, for me, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I know that people say that, but uh, I, I haven't been a part of any football team that looked at a game as like we're going to lose this game. <laughs> I, I really just. I don't care if I win this game. So let's get that out the way. But uh, I think it's mostly the fans that uh, got got us riled up because all week they're just yelling "roll tide" in our faces. Like as we walk down the street, <laughs> it's insane. Like all week they're just reminding you that. They think they're better than you. So I think that kind of it, it kind of helped us out, honestly. Yeah. And, and then, like, for me, it was, uh, like, the coming out. Like, when we came out, to me, we should have been coming out the middle of the tunnel, like, at the beginning and get all the way out to the uh, to the 50-yard line. They had us come out the side, and we had a little fireworks. But then Alabama, they to me, I felt like they had all these crazy fireworks. They went from like, the middle all the way to the 50. And I'm like, bro, I thought we was the home team. Like I really was like, this is wrong. you know, like it's like they treating us as like we second, like like we're second citizens, and you know, then the year before that, just to go deeper, a year before that, I remember, I think it was Hawaii that got Hawaii destroyed. Georgia. Yeah, 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 they got destroyed in Georgia. So a lot of people was like, this is a wash game or something. So to me, coming out like us coming out from the side and they coming out from the middle. And it was like, come on now. We should have way more fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing out the fireworks. We got them sparklers, though. 
<laughs> no, I for me, like go, building up into that game, I I remember, you know, just talking to the fans here in Utah, but like, you know, like weeks before the game, they're like, Hey, I got my, my plane tickets. Like Mike, just, just keep it respectable. Just like promise me that you'll just keep it respectable. <laughs> like, you know, they're like, you don't need to give me a W just, just keep it, you know, close just, yeah. you know, and, um, but like, I, I mean, I remember having all the confidence in the world. I remember like having film sessions with Sly and just watching this be like, dude, we're going to, we, we got the, like, just, there was nothing on uh, that their offense was showing that I was like, worried about like it was, it was like we obviously needed to get like our uh you know be prepared and everything like that but you know i knew that i knew we knew that uh that uh um sean was gonna be able to cover julio you know i mean for the most part at least he has good good matchup like obviously he was gonna be a tough tough ma matchup but we just felt great about how sean was gonna be able to match up with him and then just all the adjustments that we were making like it was just uh, like going into that game uh it, just had tons of tons of confidence and 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 the one thing we didn't know about was how our offense was going to play and yeah. there's no offensive guys here i wish matt was here but like you know like <laughs> defensively we had all the confidence in the world but just like nobody knew nobody, nobody would have ever bet that we would have come out and scored 21 points in that first quarter and moving the ball like we did yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's that's like, though because we got them away from what they like to do like they like to Bama is historically a team that plays good defense, runs the ball. But, I mean, when you're down 21, you're not thinking about running the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, like, I think that was the that was the game that we – I think that was the most we ran cover zero, like, all, yeah. all season. Like, we ran we ran so many blitzes and so many cover zeros where it was man-to-man. -man. And to me, Coach Anderson gave us that confidence where it was like, like, no matter what, I believe that um, our team is better than your team. Our players can match up much better than yours. And – um when um the left tackle Smith Andre uh, Andre, Andre Smith, when, Andre Smith. Yeah. yeah yeah when he got suspended oh yeah Coach, Coach yeah. Anderson of course Anderson was like we gonna light we gonna light them up like let's see what they could do and then all of a sudden they had an offensive lineman that got hurt too and they had to like play musical chairs or putting people in different spots yeah. and we just like game them. over at that point games over at that point <laughs> games over yeah. he's like send the blitz you're right we did we ran so much cover zero in that game. Yes, Coach Anderson was just like, I love that whole premise. We ran Yogi Bear <laughs> assault kill zero. So much. <laughs> like, oh man, I, we, I got my interception off of, off of a cup of zero. I got my interception off a cup of zero. Manned up on a tight end. Was that was that was that? Or I thought that was uh, Deuce Badger where you had to do vertical hook on the back the tight end. Nah, it was zero because I was sitting there reading. I didn't move. I All right. Yeah. Hey, it was easy, you know. I I had to trade Mike. I'm like Mike. I want to blitz, <laughs> and so I made Mike go into coverage, <laughs> and then I came off with a long stick. I think it was Koa, and I freaking got in uh, Parker Wilson's face, and he threw the right ball to you. I, Mike always knew that I I made it at the last second because you know we can't make changes at the last second. So, um, I want to so, hold on, Sly. Sense. Can we can we talk about your your uh, sack dance really quick? Oh, Zach Dan? Let's get him started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have did Sean Merriman. The lights off. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> you missed the whole. You missed the whole. You got a flag for that. <laughs> you did Sean Merriman. They didn't let you have a for balls. So, Man, so, 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 I was, no, it's like, go ahead. I was just in the moment. You know, I, I was so juiced because, you know, that was the first series. And I was talking mad crap, first of all. Because just like Mike said, it's like, we literally were in New Orleans, or even the week before, and we're just studying so much film. And we're hearing all the stuff on ESPN about the matchup and how 90% of the nation is, is is going for Alabama. I'm just like, why? Like, I, I don't get it. What what are they doing? That is so crazy. And so Still getting going. into the coin toss, you know, uh, with, with their center, whatever his name is, McCall, and man, I was I was just looking at their quarterback like I normally do in every coin toss. Coin toss and he decided he said he he was going to kill me. I was like, you better pack a lunch, homeboy. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> and so, in that first series, you know, I it was like we have to get a start. You know, I think everything goes off of momentum. And, and you know, me being one of the leaders on the team, I was like, we got to make some kind of play. So I'm I'm so happy that Coach Anderson called that blitz on third down and long. I was like, this is it. I timed it perfectly because I saw I saw the uh, play clock go down, and I'm like, okay, I hear the I hear the cadence. He's about to snap this right now. So I just timed it perfectly, and I got back there quicker than I even thought. And then I don't know the the pose just came after that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you know? 
something that uh, I I want to bring up to you guys. So so last year when when COVID really hit, uh, we were we were trying to come up with some you know creative content throughout. And and I know I know that Mike Wright jumped on 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 this stream. It was it was the Great Ute debate. It was Sly and BJ debating against Quinton Ganther and Eric Weddle of who was the better team. And and uh, Der Derek Shelby put out a tweet that I want to I want to <laughs> talk about here in a minute. But something that something that er Eric Weddle said going into that Sugar Bowl was he he and he and BJ were were, were a texting a bunch. Brian Johnson yeah. and going into that game, Brian's like, we really have something for them. And and Eric's like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, I'm sure. So Eric went and bet a bunch of his teammates on the the uh, chargers and he said he collected like three thousand dollars from you guys just so you guys know from that game i'm gonna, I'm gonna question that number because i know how nfl bets go <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was actually probably being a little bit more on the white Shelby, side. When, he, when he said that i'm like that's all <laughs> but but I then uh, thank you for a minute now three grand is it I mean, maybe there wasn't a lot of Bama guys on there, but he, he was saying something like that. And, you know, again, I, I'm not in an NFL locker room. I don't know what these bets are like. Um, I do know what NFL players get paid, yeah. but that's about it. But, um, you know, and then, Derek, you actually tweeted out that, um, uh, you know, pumping up this this stream that – and, and you went out there and said it, this is the best Utah football team in history. There's another team who went without a loss and busted the BCS as well. They were probably a little bit more dominant, but you got, I mean, there's a lot to be said about which team is better. What uh, makes, uh, what it. makes 08 better than 04? Uh, I think for me, honestly, like look at the number of years of like the players that went on to play at the next level. Like if you add the years, like there's Alex Smith and uh, I'm pretty sure there's some more on there, but uh, I, 04, like I, Weddle, I, I Weddle. Oh yeah, for sure. Weddle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got some all pros on there, but I mean, Koa, Kruger, Slough was in the NFL, Rojo was in the NFL, Sean was in the NFL, RJ was in the NFL, David right. Reed, Beatles, Schla was Slaughter off? Slaughter off again. Yeah, like, yeah. Go down the line, I'm telling you. Silver. <laughs> you make a really good point. <laughs> That's Brandon Burton. Yeah. You. I mean, yeah. I, it, and it's crazy because I said it before. I was like, you know, their offense was very powerful. Their offense was putting up putting up points. Yeah. You know, but then, you know, you had Eric Weddle that was a defensive player that was putting up points too, you know, running a wildcat. But in reality, I felt like our defense can match up with anybody that um anybody that lined up on the other side. Because even um even that Sugar Bowl year, I mean, I felt like I wanted Florida really bad. And I felt like defensively, we wanted Florida because we felt like in our heart that Tim Tebow and that offense was very powerful. But we want to we want to show Coach Witt that we had his back about who's the best coach and who coached like who coached it the best. Um, but defense wise, going against that 08, uh, I'm 100 percent sure that we would have won that game. And I'm not saying that we would have we would have dominated. We would have slowed that offense down. The offense was very good, but we would have slowed them down. And that's all you need is to slow it down. And we could, like I said before, we played a lot of bend don't break defense throughout that whole season. It was a lot of times that um, a lot of those games felt like we can. We can lose either way, but we felt like defensively, if we're the last person on the field, we can definitely win the game. All right, fin final thing from from uh, Mike Wright, Rojo, and Derek Shelby, and then we'll we'll cut you loose because we got our, we got to move on to our next group. But what does the 08 season mean for you personally? We'll, we'll start with Derek. Uh, for me, it just gave me a lot of uh, a lot of great players to like try to model my game after. You know, uh, I named a couple guys, but. Uh, those guys really help uh, help me push myself to uh, be like the player I, that I end up being because uh, just learning from those guys, Paul, Koa, uh, I could can never be thankful for all those guys. Mike? Uh, I mean, for me, just great memories. Like, I think we kind of put together, like, the blueprint of, like, success, I feel like. Like, at the start of the year, like, we all put, like, wrote down goals and, like, uh, like held, held each other accountable as a, as a team throughout the entire season and ultimately achieved what we had set out to achieve from the very beginning. We hit all of our team goals. Like that was like the one thing that probably like has never happened in a, maybe one other time in a Utah football season. And we've talked about it a little bit, but like, it just doesn't happen very often. And so kind of give me that blueprint of success, but just all these good memories and like, and just hanging out with the guys was probably more fun than even like playing in these games. And so like, you know, these opportunities to come back and chat with these guys about, you know, what we did in our playing days. 
is, is awesome, but um, it's, it, and then, but you know, like I got to think Alabama too. Cause like after that, like they make, they make the fact that we beat them more and more unbelievable every year. And so, like, it's that's great. Like, thanks Nick Saban for that. Cause that's great. With one of your losses. Go, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. And then for me, um, I mean, it was family. Like, I mean, these are my boys, these are my brothers. And, um, I mean, it meant everything to me to uh, be part of this team. But then also, like, the off the field stuff that we all, like, connected on. And, um, you know, it got to a point where the coaches defensive – I mean, defense-wise, it got to a point where the coaches didn't even have to coach us on defense. We all understood that we had our job. And we all understood that we had each other's back. It really became, like, a full family. And now, like, even after 08, I still reach out to Mikey here and there to talk to him about a couple of things. And, you know, right now with the way the world is going, it, we never seen color line when it came to our team. We all seen one goal and we all stuck together. And that was the one thing that I loved was just the family side. Like we, we big on family. We all catch up with each other, kids and different things. So the family played the big factor into us being undefeated because we really had to depend on each other and we had to like have each other back no matter what. Even if somebody made a mistake, we always had each other back. Sly, do you have any parting shots for these guys before we let them go? I hate every single one of you. I hope you I never see you again. Nah, I love you guys. Appreciate it, man. Uh, let's connect soon. Yeah, yeah. Send me your makeup guy, bro. You look great. Wow, you see that? <laughs> Fresh. H -D like camera. that. Got you. Derek, Mike, Rojo, thank you guys for joining us. I really do appreciate it. All right, oh, thank yeah. you. All right. All right, there you go. That was Derek Shelby, Mike Wright, and Rojo, uh, we, we we missed out on on a Matt Asiata. Now joining us next, uh, we have we have two of our guys jumping in right now. We have R.J. Stanford, former Utah cornerback and former Utah offensive lineman. When when he shows up here in, in a minute, Robert Conley uh, joining us here in just a moment. But uh, R.J., how are you, man? I'm good. Everybody hear me? All right. Yep, we Big got you. Uh, What's up, R.J.? What's up, man? I appreciate the opportunity to be on here. So. And Sly, good to see you. Thanks, and then, and, and then we also have Big Con, who actually is now the running back coach at Weber State, taking over from another Ute legend, Quinton Ganther. Hey, how's it going, guys? Sorry about that. Um, I'm actually in the process. I'm about to fly out in a couple hours. So I was, oh, <laughs> I, uh, right. was scrambling. I, actually, I got my uh, schedules crossed up, but uh, very excited to be on the show. Big Con, so, what's up, my dude? What's going on? Back in Utah, huh? Yeah. What's going on? What's up, RJ? What's up, Con? Big Con. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. So I know. I'm I haven't seen you well. in, a, in a minute. I'm doing yeah. good. Though. So uh, just just to kind of kick things off, we were, we were we were talking with the last group about it, but you guys had a lot. It was, you know, Sly called it a, a, a media circus, and I, I think that that could probably put it the right way, but you guys had a lot of hype around you. You had a lot of players coming back. You guys were a really talented team. Um, in that group of five, but did you guys think coming into the year that you guys could do what 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 that 2014 did, and that was busting the BCS? Um, I I guess I'll go first. I did just because I had seen it. You know, I was part of that team. I registered that year, but you know, I was able to see that I came into college and I was able to see, you know, the the blueprint and 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 the process and. I felt like we had everything that they had, um, and we were just as talented, probably a little more athletic on defense, to be honest, um, even though they had great players. And so, yeah, I absolutely felt that we, we had what it took to run the table and make history, in which we did. Now, RJ, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you here in just a minute. We, we also have Joe Dale jo uh, joining us right now. Um, but, Joe, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you here in just a second. But, RJ, did you guys think you guys could, could you know, bust the BCS? Um, yeah, now I'm going to pick up kind of where Rojo left off when he talked about the family. I think one of the unique things about our team was the demographic itself. We had a lot of guys from Texas, Hawaii, Vegas, California, and Utah, right? And I think for the secondary, at least, I mean, we've had the most probably fair-skinned DBs on the, across the nation. But because of that, um, that just – created so much chemistry and we were so competitive within each other just because of oh, big con and, and joe dale's from texas slides from vegas so everybody was doing their job representing each city 
and we were so competitive within each other and the coaches did a great job just preparing us leading up to that year leading up to that game um when we talk about effort uh when we talk about just work we worked hard and we played harder and so i think that just gave us so much confidence going into that year and going into that game that i mean i think we we had no doubt that we were going to run the table you know so i think we had so much confidence going into that year yeah definitely we had there was so much leading up i, I there's so many like storylines that we can have with that you know i said it in the last group that you know we looked at it in winter training and we're like i got big con over there squatting 700 pounds i got uh beetles over there benching i'm like we we got a we got a team here and and so like and then to top it off training camp started and we got this camera crew that's following us i'm like why why at this moment so i was just like there's something special going on here you just felt it you know as rj and, and roger said you know we had that family aspect where we always got together in the off season and and really solidified our chemistry and then you know just you know, we we were able to get on each other throughout the year you know and know that any type of criticism that was coming was only to get to the end goal which was winning and, you know, everybody had the same mission. So I just think that we were all on the same page and, and uh, the true definition of what a team stood for. Now, so, something that we ended up doing with, with the last group, we Sly and I wanted to kind of break up the games. And obviously, we're, we're going to talk about the Sugar Bowl with, with both groups. But we ended up talking about the, the game against the Horned Frogs and against the Lobos with, with that last group. With you guys, we're going to start with Oregon State. Now, that was a game where – it got a little, it got a little crazy at the end, especially when, and uh, in, in a big, big con. You can talk about this on offense, where you guys had to score a touchdown and also a field goal, and I, I think it was like what eleven points in the last ninety seconds in order to beat Correct. the Beavers. Just talk about that, that whole process. Well, well, for one, we just never stopped believing, and we were led by our leader, which is Brian Johnson, which everyone on here knows. Um, but I think. Well, first off, Oregon State had a really good team. Um, they had a guy by the name of Stephen Paya, um, who was really, really good. I, I, for a while, he held the bench record. And that was the guy I was pretty much lined up against uh, most of the game. Um, but like I said, they had a really good team. We never stopped believing. Um, and, I mean, you know, we played to the end. And ultimately, that's that's what it boiled down to. The defense, they did, they did a great job the whole game, but – Offensively, we had to put together some drives in order to come out successful, in, in which we did. But like I said, we, we believed in our leader, um, and, and we just kept going. That was the only game, actually, I've been booed, cheered, and booed in the same in the same game. So just to show you how wild the game was. Big Con, I got a question. What did BJ say? You know, because one of the things that BJ's always said, you know, even from, from that game and, and even today was that, he noticed when fans were leaving the stadium. And at the end, what did he come in the huddle and tell you guys leading into that drive that, you know, one we scored and then the other one where we put Louie in, in position to kick that field goal? What, what was BJ's mindset? What did he say? What, what did he say to you guys? I mean, he was just saying, let's just go in. Uh, and, and he was – and we really believed him just because he was always cool, calm, and collected, uh, never – never losing composure. And I think that exemplifies a true leader. Um, you know, from a lineman standpoint, I know a lot of you guys are big time skilled guys and have been your whole life, but from a lineman standpoint, and it's not to knock any other guys, but when you look at your quarterback, when he speaks, you got to truly believe it in your heart and with everything you got, or it's just like kind of, it's, it's really demoralizing if you really don't believe it. But for, as far as what Brian said, he just said, let's go win this. Uh, and, and maybe he had on a little bit of uh, <laughs> vulgar language at the end. But at the, <laughs> bottom line is we believed it and, and we went executed. It's the bottom no line. Question. No question. Yeah, Jeezy, what about you, man? Uh, what do you remember from that game? Yeah, well, first of all, I got a couple of great hairs from that game. <laughs> and uh, But coming from – what Big Con was just mentioning that confidence, man. It it really starts there, and it, and that was kind of the 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 aura throughout the season, man. When when it started from the coaching staff, you know, Coach Witt, you know, we'd have these talks in in the locker room. 
he, they were, did a great job preparing us throughout the week. And then when we actually got into the game, having a quarterback that was calm. And mind you, I was a gunner on punt. So I was always rooting for the offense, man, because, you know. It, you didn't want to go down. Out, that was a tiring day for me, you know, because you have to go out on the punt and come back and play defense. But um, that game, man, was 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 – exciting but it was stressful but also on that sideline man you could just tell everybody was so engaged and everybody believed in each other bro and that was the thing that you know i appreciate about the 08 team was we could look at each other on the sideline we could look at each other on the field and just have that confidence knowing that hey even though we're down and we got to make a run we were confident we could get it done and so that, that was my take on that game yeah man that game was it was nuts you know, there's there's so many things that a lot of people don't really realize. Like, okay, exactly one week before that, Oregon State just beat the number one team in the country in USC. So they're already on the high. Secondly, we had a short week, and we played Weber State. And honestly, those games, we get really beat up in those games because we're trying not to get beat up. But, you know, even against those D2, D3 schools, like, I mean, I remember I had this big thigh bruise, and I was like, it was hard to walk that week. But, like, we knew we had to come out for this Oregon State game. That was our chance to really jump up in the polls and really establish ourselves in the nation because they just beat the number one team. So, of course, that that, that proves well for us. But um, what I remember and take away from that game is defensively, it was the first time I really felt defeated. You know, it was just like we were literally giving them all we got and they just keep coming and, and they're just there and just – you know, normally the defense is like we're always stable and you can always, you know, count on the defense to be there. But like we gave up, you know, um, a, a screen to Jacquez Rogers and he got all the way down there and they scored. And that was just at a point of the game. We're just like, dang. And then, you know, and just to see BJ and the offense go down there and make it happen gave us that second boost of energy to come out and give them the ball back and then put Louie in scoring position. So, um, again, that was another team effort one. And I think that game really led on to the, to the TCU game, you know, where, you know, there is no scoring throughout. We're down 10-0. And, um, you know, as a defense, we got to keep it going. We got to give our mm-hmm. offense one shot. So I think that Oregon State game, how that ended and in, in believing in B.J., gave us the energy later on in the season to make sure that we stayed in the game against teams like TCU. By the way, Sly, for the uh, Oregon State game, that was the most points you guys gave up in that season. Yeah, I I said that was a point where we just felt defeated because, like, their offense was great. You know, uh, Mui Val was their quarterback, and he was just – he was doing such a great job against our defense that, you know, normally doesn't happen. Like we have a really good defense from athlete from athletes to scheme, like it just meshes so well. And like Mui Val was just he was just picking us apart. Their their play calling was great, but like you know it was just a, it was a game where we just like damn somebody got us. And then you know we just uh, BJ came back and the offense handled their thing, man. And so we just it it was just a real team effort where the offense had the defenses back in that game for sure. All right, so now another game to highlight um, BYU. You you guys get to talk about the BYU game. Uh, I know I know that the rivalry is different for every player, especially when when you don't come from from this state. But you guys you guys have played in it. You guys you guys have have been able to witness it. I mean it it was it's not it wasn't as dominant um, of you know a series in Utah's favor as it is now. Obviously with with nine straight wins and you know people are are thinking that it's already going to be ten this year. But just back then, um, Robert, we'll we'll start with you. What was your kind of mindset whenever BYU came up on that schedule? Well, just to kind of piggyback off of what you just said, Trevor, me growing up in, you know, Southeast Texas, I was not familiar with the rivalry. Um, And then, you know, when I became a a youth, I I seen very quickly that, you know, sides got divided. Um, I've always respected BYU. I I didn't necessarily hate them, uh, but I definitely did not want to lose to them under any circumstances. Um, but, um, you know, every time we, we went against those guys, it, it seemed like it always kind of went the re, re, quite frankly, the only two years where it didn't go down to wire was my true freshman year, which was 04 and 2008, which I think that within itself just kind of, it just kind of, um, you know, symbolizes those years were special, you know, uh, because every other year it, it went down, it always went down to the wire. 
against those guys. Um, but, you know, I mean, like I said, I I didn't necessarily hate him, but I definitely did not want to lose to him uh, without question. So I, I always felt like they were well prepared and they were well coached as well. But uh, I, I definitely took it personal um, but and did not want to lose to those guys under any circumstances. So. RJ, how did you view the, the BYU Utah rivalry, especially when you were when you were new to it? Yeah, yeah. Um, same with Big Con when I was new to it, coming from California, you didn't really understand the depth of it, but you learned very quickly. Uh, because leading up to that game all week, they're playing highlights from the previous years. I mean, they're going back. And so they have it on the TV screens. And when you walk into the locker room, we walk into the lobby. And I wore 25, which was the same number as Morgan Scally. So, and he would miss Utah, you know, before Weddle during that era. And he would always remind me of like the importance of, of the pedigree that we come from with Utah and just having that pride in that game. So that game was all about bragging rights. It was about pride. And like Big Con said, we definitely didn't want to lose. Um, we didn't think about losing, but I think they had our playbook a couple of those years. So that's why it came to the wire a little bit. But uh, overall, man, it was always a great time just to get the state together. Um, and, and it was the Holy War. So um, it was a great it was a great game overall. But uh, yeah, I mean, once again, we always had that confidence knowing that we could win. We will win these games. But I think just the history in Utah football itself, we Everybody got a great understanding of that game and what it meant to everybody on the team. No Something question. that I've always noticed um, in my in my ten years of, of uh, covering Utah football and obviously talking to Kyle Whittingham in press conferences and stuff. Whenever that that week comes up, he never says the words or the letters BYU together. Um, <laughs> you guys have actually played for him. You guys have, have been in you know practices leading up to those games. Has he ever said the letters BYU together? The team down south. The team down south. No, it was a team. It was always a team down south. Uh, you know, Coach Mar kind of established that. Yeah. Uh, that verbiage. Uh, where we just don't address those guys by their actual name, and I think that stemmed from you know the old, the old Ohio State Michigan rivalries. With obviously with Coach Mar being a Midwest guy, um, that that's kind of what the history behind it. I yeah, just find that so name, crazy all those years. Game, gray faces down south. You don't give them a name. <laughs> they don't get no respect here. <laughs> Especially you know I mean? when, when, when Kyle played at BYU. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah, it definitely stung with him. He, he For some reason, he just does not like them at all. And I love it because that brings the juice to the energy. You know, it, it, it all falls down. You know, from the head uh, of the snake, you know, uh, Coach Witt just led us every bit of that season. I know they said it um, in the last group that, you know, we accomplished every goals and literally the beat the team down South is the number one goal on that list. You know, we can go Oh, and 11, but you beat the team down South mm -hmm. and then it came beat Michigan. And then it came, you know, win the conference. And, you know, so, um, you know, it, it, it was always something that's always circled on our list. And as you said, it was something that has always been a, a close game. And except for 04 and 08, but like really the 08 game was close until the second half until Joe Deasy, which I, I wish he was out here because I had to ask him a couple questions about this. Joe Deasy had a couple picks in that game, some great picks, man. And so like we just made some plays in that game because we were just gelling, you know, getting off of the TCU game where we know like, look, even if it came down to the wire, we got this. We are that team that are that is so put together that we can handle anything. And then uh, just knowing that the week before that we played San Diego State, scored like 60-something points. And so, like, we can score if we want. Like, we literally can do what we want. Let's just go in here and make it happen. And even though BYU was ranked that year, it didn't matter. You know, we we definitely fighting with them, that's for sure. And, um, and, and to stay fighting is how we had to start the game. Just like Alabama, when I said that we had to uh, – I was at the coin toss because at the coin toss with me, <laughs> but um, same thing with BYU. And like all week I heard about them doing the haka on our field. And I'm just like, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. And then next, you know, like they start doing it and I'm just fuming because I'm just feeling it the whole time. And I don't even know black. I didn't, I didn't see anything. I'm just walking over there about to start a fight. And next thing you know, in my ear, I just hear Joe Dale says, we got your back. And then I look behind me and the whole team is right there. 
and the crowd is just standing. And next thing you know, we just make it happen. No hockey happening here. So that that's how we started the game with that energy, knowing that we're about to get into a fight. Let's get focused in and win this thing. So BYU rivalry will forever go down as something that I'll always remember. But um, I think the Utah BYU thing, what it does for the state, what it does for the players is uh, one of the best things that I've ever been a part of. Now, moving on to – because so you guys you guys went on to beat BYU pretty handily, and, and as Sly mentioned, it was more in that second half. But you guys finally got that got that bid, and, and they end up saying, you guys are going to the Sugar Bowl, and you guys are going to be playing Alabama. What came to mind when, when that was said to you guys, when you guys were to, uh, told you guys are going to New Orleans, playing in a big-time bowl game, you know, a chance to bust the BCS, but you're having to face Alabama. I think we were disappointed that we weren't playing the national championship game. I think, you know, I think that year we were so confident. By that time, we wanted to play the top dog. And Alabama, you know, came on our came on the bid. Um, we were excited, but at the same time, uh, I, I personally felt like we were a little disappointed because we wanted to be, you know, we're BCS busters, but we felt that year we should have been battling for the national championship you know hands down but uh alabama obviously they are who they are they have a great program and, and, and no disrespect there but i think at the same time uh i think Sly mentioned earlier in in the in the call that he was like why why is everybody on espn 90 percent you know alabama obviously they have the track record behind them but when it came to like i said the aura and our confidence in the team we were like, please, you know, and we just had that confidence that we were going to go in there and, and let them know who the Utah youths were, you know, and Big Con could speak on it, but yeah. For sure. For sure. But, yeah, I mean, just to piggyback off of what RJ said, <clears throat> I can, I agree. Um, we, we definitely, by that time, the confidence was just overpouring, and we felt like we could pretty much beat anybody in the country, whether pro, professional, or collegiate to be honest um myself i was i was excited because you know it's about five and a half hours from the houston area so I, I knew a lot of the family would be able to come travel and watch me play whereas in the previous years that hadn't always been the case but um the bottom line is <clears throat> i mean i've been blessed to be a part of really great teams my whole life and and, and but this team was i knew we could beat anybody and Man, I, I I didn't really care who lined up against us. Um, you know they were they were really big, and Sly kind of alluded to it earlier. The coin toss was probably the most interesting thing I've ever been a part of in my life. Uh, where a guy's basically threatening threatening to kill a guy. I'm like, man, Jesus, let's just play ball, man. But, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, it didn't really make no difference at that point. I mean, we we was ready to play anybody, but we did feel. Like RJ said, we did feel we were national championship caliber program, and obviously it showed. So, no question. So you guys go in there, punch them in the mouth, twenty-one nothing to start out the game. Uh, you know, Robert on offense, you got you guys were getting some things rolling. We'll 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 talk about the defense here in just a minute. But as soon as you guys scored that that a third <laughs> touchdown, what was going through your guys' mind as you guys were were playing against Alabama's defense? Well, um, that was. A little different uh I, really you got to kind of give credit where credit is due i think the coaches did a great job kind of letting it turn it over to the seniors and and and, and the juniors and the upper class when they just kind of you know letting it letting it letting it rip um if you look at that game that was the fastest the offense has started off all year and it's because a lot of it was just called straight from the field you know what i mean um Coach Ludwig had a great game plan, and he gave Brian, a, you know, a set amount of plays that, that Brian basically had free reign to call. And if you look at the game, that's why we were going so fast. Um, and I don't think Bama was ready for that style. Obviously, they were they were not. Um, and we had so really we had, we just I mean we just we we jumped out on them early, and then on the defensive side, and I'm and I'm not going to speak on too much of this, but I mean we zero pressured the heck out of those guys. Um, and we, but like I said, man, that was just great coaching and great leadership and coaches just kind of let the players play and, and forget about what everybody thinks about us or why they don't think we deserve to be there. And let's just go out and, and, and kick butt, which is what we did. 
RJ, you guys, you guys were going up against some guys. Uh, Julio Jones comes to mind, um, but you know Alabama really had had some had some playmakers for them. Yeah, uh, real quick, a, a famous Andy Ludwig quote: Whenever uh, the receivers would would run a route, he was like, "You got to go now." You know, especially if they were, uh, you know, working on timing routes or, or the deep ball. So that was uh, a thing that came to mind when Robert was talking about uh, playing fast and starting fast in that game for the offense. And once again, I was always a big fan because I was a gunner on punt once again. So that was <laughs> extra rest for me whenever the offense kept moving the chains down the field. Um, but <clears throat> when, it, when it came to like Julio Jones and, and the matchups with uh, Steve, I mean, uh, Sean Smith and Brian McCain, when there were a couple of balls that were nine routes where were just a go ball, they were play action, deep ball, trying to score a touchdown, and they were incomplete. And once those started happening, I think there was two that really came to mind. Um, that was just, you know, for me as a defensive player, they really, I mean, those were their guys, right? Those were their go-to guys, and they weren't really producing the numbers that everybody expected that game. And I think with us as a defense, the offense came out fast and defense was, was coming fast. And I, and I believe we were in better shape, honestly. I think those guys were big. They were from the South, you know, they were busy eating cornbread and greens and grits. And I think we were up there in the mountains training and conditioning. So I think that played a big factor when we came down to New Orleans, just as on a conditioning level, that we were able to run all day with those guys. Uh, and they couldn't ke keep up as far as the pace of the offense and defense. Obviously, I mean, Sly has some huge plays in that game. Um, as well as our defense, we are playing, like you said, zero coverage the whole game. Mano y mano. Um, oxygen tank needs to be on the sideline a little bit. But um, that was just the coaches, once again, providing that confidence to the players. Anytime a, a defensive coordinator – uh, when Gary Anderson was calling zero coverage and we had Kalani Sataki and, we and met up. these guys, and they're saying, hey, we're going to man up, we're going to blitz. Um, that's just communicating to that defense, hey, we believe we're going to get to this quarterback and uh, the corners, you're going to need to cover down, but we give that confidence. Meaning if you're just sitting in zone all day and the defense coordinators are calling zone, as a defense, you're like, I don't know if they really believe in our ability to really – mano a mano match up with these guys and dominate them but they were giving us that confidence with the play calls and then i mean obviously Sly was the quarterback on the field on defense running the plays uh and just exuding that confidence throughout the whole game man so i think um, i mean that that was the theme for me i mean throughout the whole season man it was the coaches preparing us in the right way giving us that confidence and just it was just showing up on the field uh, either if we even when we were down right so yeah. So no question. No, so I go. So I go. Yeah. Ahead. No, I, that, the Sugar Bowl was just amazing. You know, I think uh, it was. You know, again, the whole theme of this whole 2008 year. I think it was a full team effort, from the front office all the way down. Man, um, the coaches put together the best game plan. I think we started out exactly how we wanted to. Started out on defense, so we let our defense set the tone, and then. BJ just hit him in the mouth with that no huddle offense. I think you guys studied film on Alabama and know that they struggled with hurry up offense. BJ knew exactly what routes were going to be open, which was awesome. It's like he, well, any good player can predict, you know, exactly where things are going to happen. And uh, we were just rolling, you know, we got out 14 to zero, I think even before the first five minutes of the game. So like, it was just, we were just rolling on so many different levels, the vibe, the energy, um, I just remember me and Kepa Geisen just talking so much smack to Alabama. I don't think they understood what was coming because we were talking so much smack and they just didn't because they couldn't back it up. Like we were we were hitting them in the mouth and then we would tell them about it on their sideline. Me, I just know me and Kepa was talking to Glenn Coffey on their sideline and they literally just couldn't do anything. So it was just it was just the most epic game and of course the most epic result and um something of course that we and all of utah fans will never forget so to to kind of wrap up here i'll, I'll ask both robert and rj and then i'll even ask slice since we're going to be wrapping it up here what does that oh eight when, whenever someone talks about that 2008 sugar bowl season for utah football 
which is obviously one of the best in in school history. What what just comes to mind when you guys when you guys hear that? We'll start with with uh, Robert Connor. <clears throat> for me, it, the words that comes to mind for me is just resiliency <clears throat> and just perseverance. Because I mean, you look at the, that season; it was not a lot of blowouts. You know what I mean? And it was times where the offense was taking it up and the defense was balling out. And then like like Sly alluded to earlier, man, those those Rogers brothers, Net Oregon State, <laughs> that was the first time I ever seen our defense back on the you know, back against ropes. Uh and, and but the bottom line is just resilient and, and we just persevered through all type of adversity, man. Um and we just refused to be denied. And 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 ultimately I, I mean you know, every year, uh, a lot of people say, oh, "I think this is going to be the best Utah team that ever come through," and and I and I hope hopefully that will happen. But um, to be honest, I just don't see it. Um, the the type of characters we have on that team, as well as the coaching staff, it's hard. To, it's I think it's going to be hard to replicate or duplicate that particular um, 2008 team. And I'm very proud to be a part of it, um, and so love those guys to death. Of course. RJ? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Big Khan. And I think for me, it was one was just that that confidence. Once again, that was the theme throughout that season that comes to mind. But also, we were just so unique in the sense of not unique, but we were we all jailed together as a family. We fought like a family. I mean, there were plenty of times in the locker room. There were a couple of fights that almost happened and did happen. Um, On the field. At the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the day, we, we came together on the field. and um, But once again, I think that that confidence uh, throughout that season was when it comes to 08, it was special um, to say we were undefeated. Um, but like Big Con said, it wasn't because it was a blowout. I think it was just because that chemistry and that confidence that, that gave us that that willpower and that, that belief that we could win out on anybody, you know, even if we were down. So. I don't know. It was just a special group of guys, man. I mean, from the coaching staff, front office, uh, on down uh, to the scout team, man. Shout out to the scout team that always got us prepared, too, for those games. Uh, right. They had to mimic their star players, man. And, and everybody was doing their job. Everybody did their job, and everybody was clicking, and everybody came together on game day. Sly? Same. Um, as far as the 4 8 matchup, I do think we are the better team. I, we tried to settle it last year with Weddle and <laughs> and Quinton, but um, I, I do. You know, as as we said, it's all about matchups, right? And I I think our defense definitely matched up well against that offense. I think Alex Smith is a definite talent, but our defensive line um, w- would have been able to put some pressure on him. And, you know, we we just had – I think Robert Johnson was one of the best safeties. I played in the NFL with some really amazing people, but his ability to play the post, it, I, I don't think there was anybody ever better to play it. And so, like, we would have played to that advantage, you know. And, um, you know, I know they had Paris Warren, Steve Savoy, and Latondris and, and Madsen, and, um, and of course, um, the, the plethora of running backs. But I, I think we had the advantage on defense – our offense too, you know, from the familiarity of, you know, you know, big defense. I think we would have put them in a position to, to be vulnerable. I do think like Big Con said, it would have been a close game, but um, I definitely think that we are, um, we, we are the best team in Utah football history. And so 08 will forever go down as that, you know, and, and I hope we started something at that point. I, I really feel like you guys kind of, I mean, you know, that, that a team back, back in 2004 really t- put Utah on the map mm-hmm. and you guys kind of put them into the Pac-12, if, if that makes sense at all, to where you guys are putting them on notice, you know, Alex Smith, Urban Meyer, all of them put them on notice. And then you guys kind of launched them into the Pac-12 era. Yes, I totally agree. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off slide, but we definitely have to pay homage to that 04 team, right? They, they paved the way. They were the trailblazers. They were the team, the smaller school that was still beating up on the bigger schools or the bigger names at the time and, and provided a way for guys like me, Sly, and the rest of the guys that were on to actually come to the school uh, and, and continue to build off of that reputation that Utah was building from 04, right? And so we definitely give respect to those guys. I mean, great players. Um, we just – they passed the torch, right? And we did what we were supposed to do. 
right? And I think the next team, the year after, you know, the 2020 team, 22, 23, they should pass the torch and just continue to improve, right, and get better. And hopefully there'll be another team like us. I mean, we're unique. Might might not, but at least pass the torch on and make it a better place than where they found it, right? That's so. exactly. I, I mean, I wouldn't say anything else to that. I mean, RJ, that was that was perfect. You know, as anybody wants, you want to be able to evolve. You know, so 04 did set the stage for us to be better. We had we had something to look up to as far as like they they set the stage like it is possible. So, uh, yeah, as RJ said, pay homage to the 04 team. They're definitely great. And, you know, I feel like we evolved and we're better. And I hope these Utah football teams that are going in now are better than us. You know, that's that's what we as alumni hope and wish. And as an old guy now. <laughs> hope and wish but um but yeah uh just what rj said it was perfect rj thank thank you so much for joining us i really do appreciate it and uh ho hopefully we'll catch up down the line all right thanks for having me all right good to see you slop you too man and there you go that is rj stanford uh it looks like robert Connolly had to leave a little bit early but uh again we're, we're gonna see robert Connolly on the opposite sideline in 90 days as weber state and utah open up the season slide that was that was really cool man that really was yeah, man, um, just talking to the guys, finding stories that I even forgot uh, was awesome. And being able to see Mikey and 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 Shelby and, and RJ and Big Con, man, I haven't seen Big Con in forever. So, um, yeah, all, all these things mean a lot to us and uh, hope we can get together this season and we have people getting together, <laughs> unlike 2020. Um, but, yeah, that was tremendous to to relive that with those guys. Well, and you all, you obviously did a, a lot of the backbone work of, of putting this together, and I really do appreciate it. And I really hope you guys out there, all the Ute fans, really enjoyed watching this and just kind of looking back on, on one of the great times of Utah football history. No question. All right. Sly, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Trev. And there you go. That is the 2008 Sugar Bowl reunion. It's always powered by kslsports.com.